how did I just invest $322,000 in a pension payout? Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. This video is going to be a little different. Maybe more like a podcast. Some of you already just listened to my videos like a podcast. You're probably the ones sick and tired of seeing my 55-year-old hands. <laughs> but for those of you who need something to look at while I'm talking, I'm showcasing some of the more sentimental items right here on my desk. These are items that have been uh, gifted to me or uh, specially made for me. Some were given to me when I was very young, like this uh, Morgan from my late grandmother or uh, this Balboa from my late grandfather. Hmm. Very special. And some have been given to me since starting my YouTube channel. But in this video, I'm going to be discussing what I did with that $322,000 pension payout from my former employer. I'm not going to talk too much about my silver or gold stack, but I will answer this question. Did I use that money to buy physical gold or silver, or did I do something different? First, some background. I started my career uh, at a very large Boston law firm, fresh out of college, and no, I'm not a lawyer. There are enough of those in my opinion. <laughs> no, I, I work in the information technology field, IT. And uh, I ended up working at this law firm for 18 years. Yeah, 18 years. That's a, a long time. But, you know, back then there was a thing called loyalty. And there was also a defined pension. That was a thing. But now both are super rare. And frankly, when I started, I really didn't care one iota about pensions or, or retirement in general. No, I was 22 and it was time to start building a career and enjoy life. You know, my parents did a really good job teaching me the value of things, not just the price tag. They also taught me how to save and how to spend wisely, how to create a budget, and love the freedom that comes from a budget. They also taught me how to honor God by giving generously and being a good steward of what was entrusted to me by him. But they didn't really teach me how to invest. <laughs> they didn't tell me much about the stock market or the bond market. They didn't tell me about uh, dollar cost averaging or compound interest or, or what a mutual fund was. Uh, by the way, ETFs weren't really that popular back in the late 80s and early 90s, but uh, you know, mutual funds were. They didn't teach me any of that, really. But Bob Claremont did. He was a, a, a middle-aged man that worked at the law firm and uh, he pulled a young Yankee aside and encouraged me to invest, to think about my retirement one day, to participate in the firm's 401k plan with a company match. Of course, I thought retirement was like eons away. Okay, I had my whole life ahead of me. Uh, Social Security was starting to be a concern, I guess, back then. But it was really hard for me to think about my retirement and to commit to a 401k plan. But I did. Pretty soon, I had maxed out my 401k contributions while I was single and then while I was married. And then there was the pension something my employer had, which I admittedly took for granted. You see, a defined benefit plan or a pension provides a, a specific payment amount in retirement, but a defined contribution plan like the popular 401k allows employees and employers, if they choose, to contribute and invest funds to save for retirement. Big difference, actually. Pensions 
have largely vanished <laughs> from the retirement landscape. They're hard to find. 401ks have had to pick up the slack, despite the fact that they were designed as a supplement to the traditional pension rather than a replacement. Didn't matter. Pensions got killed when companies saw the perks of the defined contribution plan. They loved it. So let's get back to my pension payout. Back in September of 2016, when I was 50, my former employer reached out to everyone in their pension program and offered a deal. $200,000 in my fully vested pension. And there were three options. The cash out option, the annuity option, and the rollover option. Or you could just simply leave the cash that you had in the pension with them and they would continue to invest it. I have read that that first option, you know, the cash out option, is actually the most commonly chosen when offered from an employer. That means that you, you, you get a smaller amount given to you in cash immediately, and you can use it for anything you want, but it's taxed very heavily. Unfortunately, I think a lot of people just want the money and they want it now. So that is a very popular option. I didn't want that option. I thought it looked really bad. And I really didn't like the annuity option either. You know, that's where another, uh, you know, uh, private company takes your retirement, invests it and pays you out a monthly amount until you die. Well, if you die young, all the rest of it's forfeited. You, 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 know, you don't get paid that after you're dead unless you take even less each month and then your spouse could continue receiving payments after you're, you're gone. I don't like annuities, all right? I don't think they're usually a good move if you know a little bit about investing. So I had to decide, do I roll $200,000 into an individual retirement account and invest it myself or do I just have my ex-employer continue to hold my pension? That was the choice. And it was a, a tough choice. I had to ask myself some really tough questions like, you know, would my former company really do a good job investing that money versus me investing it? In other words, could I match or exceed my company's return on investment? Now, the company that I'm talking about is a super large law firm, okay? They have a massive trust department with billions of assets under management. So they, they know a thing or two about investing, okay? Uh, the pension was also more than fully funded, so I wasn't concerned about insolvency at the time. I also checked on their federal filings that they had to do to see how they were being funded and where they were investing uh, my money. So I had a good handle on what they were doing and I had to think about what I would do with that money. The other thing I had to think about, and this is really important, was the macroeconomic realities back then in uh, 2016 and where, what I thought was coming in the future. Uh, things like the solvency of our U.S. dollar, the stock and bond markets, social security, the U.S. economy in general. Uh, and then the last thing really was a conglomeration of things like, you know, the details of the offer. How generous was this $200,000 payout? Uh, my life expectancy, uh, a, a bunch of things. Frankly, the 200K seemed a bit small, okay, for, you know, working there 18 years. And I'm a healthy guy too. So I'm, I'm planning on living into my 90s at least, like uh, a lot of my um, ancestry has. So after taking all of these into consideration, I decided at that time not to take the deal, to allow them to continue to hold my pension. Fast forward four years later, okay, and again, my former employer reached out in September of 2020 and offered the same general deal and options. But this time, the amount was over $322,000.
you know, I really do think they're trying to get people uh, to take this uh, rollover or lump sum to get the pensions off their books. That $322,000 was more like it. Okay, so the numbers seemed right to me. And I also wanted more control. Um, I don't trust the Federal Reserve. I don't trust our federal government. I don't trust the banks. I don't trust the stock and bond markets. And while I think my employer has investing expertise, I'll give them that, they are all in on our U.S. bond and stock market. And that deeply concerned me. I still think the bubbles that we see all over our economy are going to pop, and they're going to pop in my lifetime. I don't want to be a victim of some pension bubble collapse. So that really uh, made me want to take more control of, of this money. I also calculated their average rate of return and found it to be about 6.5%. Not bad, but I thought I could beat that and have it protected in ways that my ex-employer couldn't protect it. Finally, uh, my uh, <clears throat> death. Even though I'm in, in really good shape for a 55-year-old, I wanted Mrs. Yankee not to lose out if I died, you know, early especially. And, and I didn't like the reduced amount um, for, in order to have that benefit. So I wanted to have all the money, okay, and have it available equally to both of us no matter what happens. So what did I do? Well, this is where it might get a little bit controversial, especially uh, in the precious metal stacking community. You know, strategically, I decided to focus more on investing my wealth rather than insuring my wealth. Okay, I wanted to increase my future retirement cash flow more than protect it from inflation. Now, I do care about protecting my wealth from inflation. I do care about, uh, you know, insurance. Uh, that's why I stack physical gold and silver. But I split it up this way. 300000 went into fully secured, very important, fully secured or collateralized private mortgage lending with a company that I have worked with for almost uh, 20 years now. So PML, I've talked a lot about PML. In fact, I have an entire playlist you can check out about private mortgage lending and why I think it's one of the most underused and most incredible investment vehicles, especially right now with low interest rates. The remainder, the $22,000 went into commodity stocks gold and silver mining stocks, uranium stocks, food and agriculture, a lot of other things. So I've been investing in areas that I think are incredibly undervalued and poised to grow tremendously over the next 10 to 20 years, especially during an inflationary time period. I'm a contrary investor. So you're not going to see me throwing money after meme stocks or crypto or even high-flying tech stocks. All right, so I didn't buy any physical precious metals with this pension payout. I could have. Uh, my uh, current self-directed IRA custodian allows me to buy gold and silver and other precious metals. Um, I could do that. But I didn't want a third party holding my metals. And I didn't really want to pay the storage fees. I wanted this to be focused more on cash flow. I have actually several uh, lots of private mortgage lending investments. When you lump it all together with this 300,000, I'm looking at approximately $5,200 a month in retirement income. That's about $63,000 a year. And that would be without taking any principle whatsoever. Now, of course, I have to pay taxes when I take the distributions. And inflation is a concern. 
but it doesn't take into consideration any social security. Hey, if it's still in existence, if they haven't moved the goalpost to like 75 or something, I'll also have some money coming in from that. So that is where I put my $322,000 pension payout. If you want to have a little discourse with me on this, leave a comment down below. What would you have done with the $322,000 pension payout? Thank you so much for watching and I hope your day is a-okay.